Hey there, School of Tomorrow students. Uh, shout out to uh, Mercado here. Portland Mercado, that beautiful shirt. Now, this was these videos are made at a time in my life when I had the resources to do such. It didn't take much beyond a computer and a connection to the internet. I was not in a coffee shop. I was at my then headquarters in Asylum District. You would recognize the place by the Flex Tegrity sculpture out in the front yard. And my aging car would be none too soon to switch to a fleet vehicle that I did not own. I'm a big believer in institutional wealth. So given the rest of my life ahead of me, I would prefer not to be personally trying to work on amassing a vast fortune um, because that's kind of redundant and a waste of time. I would like to share the wealth in the sense of, you know, how people in the military share the submarine. It's not my submarine. It's not Bloomberg's submarine. Same with the earth itself, right? We don't like the private ownership model at some level, and that's one thing that God religions give you is a grammar where you get to thank God and thereby have all this thankfulness that's not directed to an emperor or king or queen or whatever. It's a grammatical freedom that we give ourselves to express ourselves as if to a human, another human, but nobody in this room, you could say. And the importance of gratitude in that direction and also gratitude for your life and the style of your life, all this stuff. I think those who are critical of religion, and I've listened to a lot of um, Christopher Hitchens uh, in the last few uh, days. By the way, what I'm going to do here is link up my trucker exchange program to a recent blog post as I continue to spin out these reveries. If you remember Hypertunes from Coffee Shops Network, our goal is to sort of go into a kind of a reverie mode where we're in the, the spherical pinball machine, as I call it. Now, I don't go on as long as Terrence McKenna, but if you add it all up, if you splice my stuff together, I've given quite a long talk up till now. And who knows for how much longer I'll continue to talk in this particular form. I don't know. Maybe I'll get one of those trucks. See, like here we're talking about Gordon Hoffman's presentation here to Wanderers at the Linus Pauling House. And he's got a very good overview in the sense it was pithy. We learned a lot in a short time. Talk about high bandwidth, right? And he was segueing to Python in cool ways, so I was perking up my ears and following along from that perspective, but also his interest in high voltage DC, what's going on in China and stuff. My phone's going off. Now this time of day, I often get a junk call. I would call that a junk call. I get a lot of spam on my phone. So what I did is I took this blog entry about Gordon's talk, and I connected it to a brand new essay. At this time, I'm being prolific, able to write, right? So this was um, like all of 2019, in a way, was a big time for outputting lots of YouTubes and a fair amount of Medium articles. Now, these are not necessarily well collated. Like, you can find a home page on Medium for my writing. But it's not like I've gone to the trouble yet to index them. It's ditto for my Flickr pictures. It looks not as professional as it could in the sense that I don't have tags or titles even for all those thousands of pictures. So I get some use of them by embedding them in blogs and scrolling through them on videos. But I'm reconciled to the fact that the internet is a rough and tumble cyberspace and things all have a half-life. So what I'm showing you now, all these things that existed at one time, they may not exist in this form. But uh, I was teaching codesters and so forth. Speaking of which, 
again, I'm jumping around as usual, I'm discovering that probably the future of a lot of these products is their ability to um, work with the fantasy figures that are in the cartoons and part of their fantasy life anyway, like out here in the Pacific Rim and elsewhere too, though, we're all watching Japanese animations, anime, right? And so there's this character called Kirby. I've been watching a little bit of video about him as well, right? Catch up, understand the culture that my students live in. We can scroll back here in my history, take a little bit of a look at that. Shout out to Friends at the Crowbar. That was my last video. I was just anchoring at a location in my place in Portland Asylum District and uh, had some good meetups there as a result. Or not as a result, but in continuity there, thereby. So I'm, we're, we're looking at Turkey and and Russia and Syria and these different concepts, right? We have this computer language that we're using to compute world affairs. And it's all based very seriously in sovereignty. And they, when they open a TV show, they're pretty adamant that you look at the outlines of these countries first and you understand somebody in authority all agreed on these lines at one point, right? But I kind of talk about that whole story sort of coming apart. Let me see if I can find a paragraph on that. I'm hyping how cool the Federation here is in North America of states and giving Native Americans credit for how the 500 nations or whatever we call them, in some cases, like in the Iroquois Federation, they had learned to federate. They were getting along. They were starting to see the light in terms of how to achieve lasting peace, because this was always the issue between the chiefs and so on. It's not a new problem. How to keep your people from attacking each other, right? And it it's, it's often out of necessity, you feel. Like you're freezing to death and they have excess coats, or you're starving to death and they have more than enough food, but they're not generous, and they're not sharing, right? And part of federation is piling up surplus when there is any so that when people are in need they're not left to fend for themselves or band together in that case and uh, do what they can to scavenge sometimes with armored vehicles if necessary so i talk about the tension between civilian trucks and commercial traffic and uh, the armed Vehicles that clog the same ro roads and turn to uh, slow things down, right? There's no way you can pass a long convoy of military hardware driving around if it's taking up the whole lane on a two-lane road or whatever, right? I'm just talking, it's like, it's like your bloodstream. What do you have in your bloodstream? And the bloodstream I'm aiming at in this sort of post, here we go, post-sovereign world, you could say the global university, Imagine growing up in North America and feeling secure that your state would outlive you. So that's kind of like a sense of security that people I, I find have around me in North America. That ability to take your state for granted is a luxury by world standards, right? Because these nations come and go as we see. And where you live, the border can suddenly, it's like, wait, I'm not in the Austro-Hungarian state anymore. A passport stamped Prussia or Yugoslavia suddenly becomes a collector's item. Kind of like uh, that movie Terminal with um, Tom Hanks, right? He's in the terminal in the transit lounge when his country disappears. Now what? As these once real countries become the stuff of dreams, once again the line between real and imaginary is awfully thin. I thought I'd change that to vanishingly thin. Let's do a reload here. Yeah, vanishingly. We were looking at an older version. I hit reload and the word changed. I uh, do some, you know, I publish it first and then I do some fine tuning and then I leave it alone after a while. At least I try to get the typos out. Let's hope I got them out. So Scott Ritter is focused in this one and uh, he's sounding pretty bellicose these days. Like he's ready 
for this big fight, this battle for Idlib and so on. And we're supposed to see these nation states, and then we use words like civil war and proxy war. And there is a lot of, you know, semantics in place around the nation states, the United Nations and so on. The Russians are especially good at keeping all that in focus, you know, which states in this picture are recognized by the United Nations. You know, the, the infrastructure of statehood, so long as it's around and working, let's use it. But there are many indications that corporations and other large entities, including individuals, oligarchs, and so on, are kind of throwback to pre-nation state almost, you could say, a more, <clears throat> I don't know, city-states. Because the whole world didn't automatically agree to or succumb to the picture of the borders that we teach ourselves and kind of brainwash ourselves with. You know, these nation states here, I've got Republic of South Africa, loved being there. Lesotho, Lesotho surrounded by RSA, right? So a nation inside a nation. Our constitution in the North American Federation forbids that. You can't create a state in a state, they say. But is the constitution in effect? Right? It would kind of be more proof that it isn't if there were more of that, right? I guess Texas has a constitutional option to, to get out if it wants and so on. So these are the slow-moving concepts of politics, but they're not physics. They're not really science. And so the half-life of the whole way of thinking in the nation-state sense, um, we can measure it. We don't have a picture of when it went out, but some futurists, in order to be true to their own narratives, in order to like stick to their talk and not sell out, you could say, they saw it going out and went out with it. And of course, I'm talking about Bucky Fuller, who in Grunch of Giants kind of takes out the nation state system and takes out him, goes with it when it goes, right? And I, I didn't think of him as being disloyal in the sense the way he talked, right? It's like when all, all that period of history goes, the U.S. flag might continue, right? I have one right here in the room over there in a pile of C-60, which looks like a pile of cannonballs. Same thing that's out in front of my house, but smaller. All right, that's my reverie for this morning. Let's talk again soon. Have a good rest of your day.